All right, guys, so I want to try something today. Um, I just did a video on J.J. Watt, and there was some talk about the Packers possibly being a landing spot, largely because of his connections to Wisconsin, as well as being contenders and being a, a generally a pretty good fit, obviously, not that J.J. Watt is a bad fit anywhere. But I thought I would take a look at the Packers' salary cap, and um, the way that my brain works, it's very systematized it's one at a time that's why that jj watt video was just we're going to start at the top work our way down and talk about it kind of a similar philosophy here um we're going to start with the packers salary cap at negative 28.194.726 million dollars in the hole and we're going to start at the bottom in terms of minor things that we can do and slowly start to change the salary cap over time it'll start to make sense as we go along but i, I want to kind of show how that works um, if I was ready for this I would show you right now but I'm not because um, I like to jump head first into things without planning so um, but anyways we're gonna work our way from we just got to get into the black to getting enough money for the draft picks to um, having an extra let's say eight million dollars to go into the regular season to getting to a point where we can sign JJ Watt Whatever that number may be, we'll make something up as we go along. But what's it going to take along the way to get us there? And we'll just go step by step and uh, see how it looks because I have not done this yet. So I don't even know how this looks or how, if, when, whatever, we're even going to get to um, signing JJ. But it should be fun either way. Let's get started. All right, so here's kind of the format we got. Um, obviously, we got the actions that we're doing, and I want to start off with some minor things. Uh, and there's probably a lot of different minor little things, but uh, again, we're going to go through each little minor detail because it adds up. Um, there are some other guys like Equinemia St. Brown, but I decided to hang on to them, um, Dexter Williams. Uh, but Ben Braden and Anthony Rush, I decided to move on from. That's going to save us $850,000 each, bringing us to twenty-six and a half. dollars So obviously not a massive dent, but again, I want to start at the bottom work our way up and see where this gets us. So this is, again, this is going to be the format as we continue along. Obviously, we still have quite a bit of work to do. Here we've got a couple other guys that are obviously pretty low on the totem pole. Save us almost a million dollars each. You got Kyveri Russell and Bronson Kalfusi. Um, again, we're, we're not making a ton of headway here, but um, obviously some guys that we can move on from that are not going to uh, do a ton for us. Maybe the Packers want to keep them because it kind of works the other direction in terms of they don't cost that much. So if we think that they can add something or at least provide a little bit of depth, we want to stick with them. Also, we're going to have to probably replace these guys. So it's possible that we may look to some undrafted free agents or whatever that are going to cost us some money anyways to replace them. But again, we're just going to keep adding this stuff up and see where it gets us. We'll worry about um, adding some money back later. But at this point, we're at $24.5 million. So I've added to the list that we're going to cut Oren Burks. Now, this is actually something that I, I'm not 100% certain on. It seems obvious. And again, it's not a ton of money. But I've been talking on my podcast, you can check it out here if you're interested, about the fact that this new defensive coordinator desperately needs a guy, a linebacker, that really Oren Burks is about the only one that fits the mold. Um, being a very athletic type of linebacker I know we've got like Ty Summers or whatever but I don't know I, I just I don't I don't really think that that's going to be the guy to be able to do it there's a, a very very slim chance that perhaps Oren Burks couldn't thrive in a Mike Pettin system similar to the way that Blake Martinez couldn't thrive and then you know obviously he was better before Mike Pettin showed up he was a lot better after Mike after he left and went to the Giants Maybe Oren Burks does get better with a different, you know, our new defensive coordinator is a linebackers coach, and he utilizes linebackers more, and he cares about um, their success more, but it, I don't necessarily think that means it gets easier on him. So I'm going to say that it's probably not going to be it. He's going to come in and say, yeah, that's not the guy. Slim chance that maybe it is, but uh, we're at uh, just under $24 million at this point. So our first big cut comes by way of Rick Wagner. Um I don't. There's a lot of guys that I passed up on that we could possibly move on from that I'm I'm deciding to uh, hang on to. You know, Marquez Valdez Scantling, Billy Turner, for example. You could possibly move on from, but um, I, I think if we're gonna move on from an offensive lineman, it's probably gonna be Rick Wagner. Now that's not an easy decision to make. Again, we're making some tough 
decisions to get us out of this this issue that we're in of, of a tough cap spot. Um, but I, I, I think the least amount of damage we could do would probably be Rick Wagner. He's done a great job, and the Packers, I'm sure, would love to be able to keep him, but we got to make some tough decisions, and uh, Rick Wagner is the kind of decision that you got to start making. So this gets us under the $20 million mark, so we still got a ways to go, but um, that was a big one. Another sizable cut is going to be Mr. Dean Lowry. It's going to save $4.8 million, assuming that is a post-June um, 1st cut, which is what we're going to say that it is. Um, it's going to save us a little bit more money. It's going to mean a little bit more dead cap uh, next year. We're going to have to eat up a little bit, but it'll be minuscule, and um, it'll obviously help us more this year, which is what we're after. Um, look, we need more defensive help. I just don't think he's been worth the money. I mean, it, 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 anybody you cut is going to hurt. Um I don't think too many Packer fans are going to cry about losing Dean Lowry, but the question is, how do you replace Dean Lowry? We're going to have to go out and find somebody. But, hey, we're on the warpath to, to signing J.J. Watt here. So saving up another almost $5 million brings us under the $15 million mark. Again, we got a long way to go just to get in the black, but um, we're making some headway, and we haven't really done anything that's super damaging to the team at this point. This one to me is uh, somewhat of a no-brainer. We've got cut Christian Kirksey on here, saves a little over $5.6 million, gets us under the $10 million mark. Um, Christian Kirksey, I was not a big, massive fan of him coming here to begin with. I, I don't know that he's ever really been all that great of a linebacker. It's nice for Petten to be able to get somebody that he's familiar with and is familiar with his scheme. Um, I, I get the impression that he's kind of looking at this saying, these guys are not doing what I want them to do. I don't quite have the right guys. And he felt a little bit of comfort having Christian Kirksey there, but... Obviously, that didn't work, and I don't think the new linebackers coach slash defensive coordinator is going to see Christian Kirksey as the answer to his his needs. So I think this is a fairly easy one, especially considering the amount of money Christian Kirksey is supposed to be getting. There's just no way that uh, I think the Packers are going to be comfortable with that. So again, this is one of the easier um, cuts, in my opinion, is moving on from Christian Kirksey for $5.6 million. Next up, I've got restructure Zadaria Smith, and this honestly just gets into completely speculation. Um, looking at the contract, I don't know that an extension at this point isn't the best option because the problem is when you – he's only got two years left. There's this year and next year. So when you take this year's money and push it out, you're just pushing it into next year. Um, so if we look at his contract, he's owed $22 million this year against the cap. He's $20 million against the cap next year. If we extend him, let's say we give him today a four-year contract, brand-new contract, $17 million a year, it's slightly less than his overall, but he's getting two additional years for about the same amount of money. That would allow us the op opportunity to push quite a bit of money out, You know, give him a big old signing bonus like they usually do, take that money out over four years. But rather than rebuilding an entire contract i decided that we're just going to restructure for this year and it's not that impossible so i'm going to take eight million dollars of his base salary just for the heck of it and um we're just going to give him an eight million dollar check and what that's going to do is we're going to give him eight million dollars in cash put that in his pocket and that's going to give us the ability to take that and, and split it up evenly over the next two years meaning we're going to pay four of that eight this year and take four of that eight and push it into next year. So all we're doing is we're dropping the 22 down to 18. So that's going to save us, as you can see, $4 million. Next year, he goes from 20 to 24. So it's going to hurt us next year. And again, I don't know that the best option isn't just an extension, um, but maybe we just push the money out now, and then next year we start talking about an extension, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because we're just going to put cash in his pocket um, again. So he just gets another big old check because we're going to give him a new contract with a big old signing bonus and he's guaranteed more money in the league or more years in the league. So either way, I, again, there's a lot we can do here. Um, but I, I feel like at this point, $4 million is relatively safe. That drops us down to rate about $5 million. Again, there's a lot of leeway where we could technically cut more, but if we're just restructuring, I think it's silly to try to push anything more than $24 million next year. Maybe you could, I mean, you could drop the whole $10 million put that in his pocket and make it 25 million you know it's not it's not impossible i haven't looked at, at next year's um situation quite as much but this this is all i'm really comfortable with at this point so we're just going to go with that again we're getting into hyper speculative territory but it is what it is well that's annoying i just did a whole long spiel on how we got to this and um apparently i hit a button that caused the video to stop anyways 
Let me re-explain this really quickly. We're going to extend Adrian Amos. And I know I said I wasn't going to do that with Zadarius because it's too much speculation. But let me run you through the math and the rationale really quickly. First of all, Adrian Amos might be the most underrated safety in football. In the last four years, I think he's been top five safety like three times. He was this past year, and I think he was twice with the Bears, including I think being possibly the number one safety in 2017, something like that. He was also very good in 2018, but was overshadowed being the number two safety in Chicago. But um, not only that, he's only 28 years old, and I think you know we're bringing in a defensive coordinator that has that was allegedly hired because of his familiarity with the Vic Fangio scheme and having something kind of similar. So I expect safeties to be, as well as my consultation with Coach Hahn, saying that strong safety is also a pivotal point of, of this style of defense. So I just think for every reason, they're looking at Adrian Amos as being a core piece of this defense going forward. So we are going to extend him. He has two years left on his contract. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give him a very generous offer. We're going to say, man, we, we, we love you. We want you to stay. We're going to give you a four-year contract worth $12 million per year, and I think he's going to accept that. How did I come to $4 million in savings? I'm not going to go through all the numbers again, but let me just explain the rationale. We gave him... Sorry, I bumped into the mic there. Uh, let me pull this back up. So we gave him a four-year contract worth $9 million per year. In the first year, we paid him $5.15 million. So I took that as a proportion. Let's say if we paid 5.15 on 9, how much are we going to pay on 12? And it came to like 6 point something. So we drop the $10.9 million, or excuse me, the $10.3 million cap hit that we have right now. And we drop that to six point something or another, and it saves about $4.04 million. That's how I came to that. We just used a proportion based on, you know, having a new contract. So, um, again, we're, we're completely tearing up the old contract. We're giving him a new four-year deal, $12 million a year. We're going to pay him about $6 million. Um, uh, this, this, I mean, not, not pay him. He's going to get a massive paycheck because they always give massive signing bonuses. But again, in terms of the proportion, uh, the cap hit, it's only going to be about $6 million. So we're going to save an additional four. And as you can see, that already brings us to about $7 million. So we're doing quite well. Um, hopefully, I'm still recording, so I don't have to explain this for a third time. We are. We're going to stop there, and um, we're going to pull up a couple other things to see, first of all, where we're at, and then also uh, see how much more money we can come up with. So I'll interject really quickly. I looked it up. According to Over the Cap, we're looking at about uh, eight point let's just call it eight point eight and a half million dollars is how much it's expected to cost the Packers to re just sign their draft picks so we're just under the ability to sign them but obviously we've got uh, quite a bit more to go here not quite a bit but we've got some some heavy hitters coming so um, we'll continue on obviously I think we're going to at least have enough to sign our draft class and um, we'll see what we can do beyond that all right jumping back in one more time I added a couple things here as you can see, eh, I can't point to it, but I added these guys here. So the draft cost $8.253 million. I'm saying that we want to carry $8 million into the season. I don't know exactly you know, how much we need or whatever, but I, I know generally, from what I understand, $8 million is about what you want to be able to carry in for you know, if you get a massive injury or whatever, you need money to be able to bring people on. So how much money is left for J.J. Watt? That leaves us negative $9.2 million. So that's kind of where we're at. All right, so next we're going to restructure David Bakhtiari's contract. This one always, it makes me very wary because it seems unlikely that the Packers didn't know what they were doing when they structured this to begin with because they just did it. It seems really unlikely to me that they're going to say, here's the contract and here's how we like it structured. Um, and then a couple months later, like, look, we messed up. We need some more money. Can we possibly do this? Maybe it's just kind of a long-term play. Like, this is the structure with the, we were always planning on doing this in the future. I don't know. Um, also, I got a different number, but part of, um, I'm, I'm using a couple different resources, and I'm going to rely on their math. This is from um, IT Hedgehog on, Packer, uh, on Twitter. He's the one that kind of did a lot of these different things. He came up with $8.3 I came up again with a different number, but I'm just going to stick with, with his numbers on this. But um, the, the general idea is he's owed like $11.03 million in March. That is a cash check that goes in his pocket, and all of that goes on the Packers' salary cap in 2021. The idea here is that we're going to convert that into a signing bonus because a signing bonus can be chopped up evenly over the four years 
um, that comes out to like $2.75 million over four years, meaning instead of paying him 11 some odd million dollars, we're paying him $2 million. And then we have to add that two something onto the remaining years, which doesn't seem that big of a deal until you look at 2024 when he has to pay him over 30 million. But at the time, it probably won't be as big of a deal. Just seems shocking today. So it kind of seems like a no brainer. And I don't know why David wouldn't do it. It's just, it makes no difference to him. It's just a, how it's structured as far as the Packers salary cap going forward. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, again, it's just how about we just give you a check today instead of waiting until March and then then we're good. So, again, it, it seems simple, and it's a massive amount of money. As you can see, that puts us at 15, almost $15.3 million, just a million dollars under um, what we need to pay off the draft and have an additional $8 million for fun. <coughs> Pardon. Um, and, again, a lot of this is kind of just made up, but it is what it is. So, the uh, effectively, we're $15 million over right now. So, we're doing pretty well. Um and we've got at least two more things that we need to do. And um, I mean, I'm feeling good about it. Again, a lot of people are panicked. And, and again, I don't know if we're going to do all of this. All these things have consequences. Maybe we want to keep these guys. Maybe we want to keep this guy. Maybe we want to keep this guy. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe Dean is, it, we don't want to go that far. So we restructure it a little bit. You know, we're kind of making a lot of this up, but this is showing, and it's not even to the most, the furthest extreme. I mean, I, I could cut this down even more but this is what i feel is realistic and realistically without really trashing our team um in fact i'm kind of excited about extending amos i love that uh bakhtiari is going to be long term preston was going to go like i said either way we could possibly get more out of zadarius we're at 15.3 it's not as dire now can we get jj is a completely different question but can we get here yeah and we we've got at least one more no-brainer one more no-brainer that's going to save us a bunch of money. So we'll we'll do that right now. All right, so we're kind of uh, we gotta gotta make this a little bit bigger. We'll get to there. We'll we'll get there next time. Um, again, I'm kind of making these numbers up a little bit because I don't exactly know how the structure would be, but but I want to give Devonte Adams an extension. Um, I didn't want to base it on his last extension because he was extended off of his rookie contract, so the gap. Um, is going to be massive. In other words, what he was getting compared to what he's he's now getting, um, rookie deal compared to big boy money, um, and so that structure was going to be a little bit off. So instead, I used David Bakhtiari's extension because the guy was already making a good amount of money. Now he's making more money, so there's less. You can't cut down year one all that much. That's that's the point. You can't bring that down to like two million dollars because there's just too much that you'd be pushing out. So I figured David Bakhtiari's contract, at least in terms of proportions, would make the most sense. And so when I looked at it, it it's again, I did the exact same thing. I said, OK, so he's getting four years, ninety two million dollars. Um, so we look at what that is per year. They're paying him sixteen point two five in his first year. So we're looking at what was that? I think about 70 percent of his per year total was paid in year one. If we use that as just sort of a general structure, 70 percent of what Devonte Adams is getting now at about 16 million ish, it drops it a little bit under five million dollars. So I just rounded it to say that but that extending him is going to save five million again. No idea, no idea, but I think it's realistic considering that's essentially proportionally exactly what we just did with David Bakhtiari. If we just keep it exactly proportional, we save about $5 million by extending Devontae Adams. As you can see, that puts us um, over $20 million in the black, and it gives us about $4 million more than we would even need for, what, for, for signing free agents, right? And again, if you drop this down to six million dollars we have now six million dollars for jj or whoever in the free agency realm that we decide that that's what we want to do so um the only other thing left is aaron Rodgers, and i don't know how comfortable i am playing with that but let's look at it anyways because that's what we're doing today all right so we extended this out a little bit and i've got some numbers here that'll all make sense in a little bit but we're going to restructure aaron Rodgers' contract and i, I kind of like this a little bit as you've probably heard, what this means is there's no way we're moving on from him. But I, my contention is they learned that when he won the MVP. Um, not everybody agrees with me on this, but I think by drafting Jordan Love, and this doesn't mean we're never going to move on from Aaron Rodgers and use Jordan Love, right? It just means it's not going to happen in 2021, 2022, or 2023 is all that means. Possibly 2024. 
But I, I, I think when you drafted Jordan Love, the, the issue was we didn't know what we were getting from Aaron Rodgers, right? It wasn't exactly the greatest performance we've ever seen in our lives in 2019. And although there was, there was a possibility that he blows up in the system, we hadn't seen it. Once it happened and he won MVP, it became very clear this is it. This is the future. And there's no way he regresses in the next two to three years to the point where we should have never signed the guy. We're talking about 2021, 2022, and 2023. So I think they know that we're sticking with them, right? What happens with Jordan Love, I don't know. You can say it was a bad decision, but I think it was a hedge your bets where the worst possible scenario is that Aaron Rodgers is the MVP and we have to move on from Jordan Love, whoop de doo And again, they may still move on after that. Here's how this works logistically, though. Here's the situation. Um, this right here, 14.352 is his base salary. We're going to convert that. Uh, we're going to drop that down to $2 million in base salary. So that's we're going to drop 14.352 down to 2, and we're going to split that over three years, and this is what it looks like. So we have to take this is now these two. So we're talking 6.04. That's where we get our savings of 8.312, right? Massive savings, and we'll get to all this in a little bit. So stick with me here. This becomes this. Now, the concern that everyone's going to freak out about is this, because we have to take 4.04 and add it to next year, which brings his total up to 43.85 million. That's a disaster. That's horrible. How can we possibly do that? Simple. The Packers were brilliant by having his final year only be $28 million against the cap, meaning next year we just do it again. Next year we do it again. And what we're going to do, because we have 43.85 this year, i.e., or, or you know, in 2022, but only $32 million the next year, we can take $10 million because it's a base salary of $25 million. And hes I don't think he's ever going to say no to taking um, – taking bonuses because again they're just writing a check and stick it in his pocket of course you're going to take that it's guaranteed money the day they sign the check and it's cash in your pocket in your bank account so what you do you take 10 million dollars you split that as you give them a 10 million dollar bonus you take 5 million off of this that drops that down to 38 million this brings this up to 37 38 million dollars and 37 million dollars it's not going to kill anybody. The only real problem with this is the fact that, again, you cannot move on from them. It's going to kill you. But I think the Packers learned that. And I think the structure of the contract was such that we don't know for sure if we're going to stick with Aaron Rodgers. Just same reason they drafted Jordan Love. It's not just because the board said so. Of course, that's part of the, it's a major part of the equation. But if you know you're sticking with Aaron Rodgers, you do not draft Jordan Love. Now they know, and so again, not only are they restructuring the way that they view things, they're restructuring his contract. His contract was one that reflected a team that was ready to move on in 2022, possibly. They're no longer ready to move on, I don't think. So I think they are in a position now to restructure this that in a way that guarantees he's sticking around, and I think Aaron Rodgers is going to want that. Not only is he going to like the financial aspect of getting more cash in his pocket, but I think he's going to like that the Packers are, are essentially saying you are locked in for the next three years as the Packers' starting quarterback, and we'll reevaluate it after that. Now, again, as you can see, we are now $28 million over the cap just by doing, again, some, some things that I think are completely realistic. Um, that gives us 8.25 to sign our draft class, $6 million of extra money just to carry into the season if we want to go out and get somebody. And $14 million. I, I tell you what, we can not only get J.J. Watt, because let's say, I don't know what it's going to cost, but I don't even think it would take all $14 million in year one to get him in here. You could possibly, you know, I mean, this is at the very least enough to bring in Corey Lindsley, or sign Corey Lindsley. I don't know that you can't get Corey Lindsley and J.J. Watt. I, again, I don't know. I mean, if, if he's going to cost $25 million, then year one is not going to be less than 14. I don't even know if 14 is going to be enough, but I don't think he's going to cost $25 million. I don't know what J.J. Watt's valuation is, but the point is, is there enough money for him? Yes. Is there enough money for Corey Lindsley? Yes. Can we get everybody? No. We can't have King and Lindsley and, um, you know, Aaron Jones and Jamal and J.J. Watt. Obviously. I mean, very few teams can do all that, but this is what I'm looking at. I think this is, you know, $14, 15000000 million over what you need for the draft and for you know extra little carrying cash you're gonna have about 14 million over possibly 
Now, I don't know. Again, I don't know how many of these things are here, but it just it just puts some numbers to the panic because right now everyone's looking at it saying there's no money. Where's the money going to come? We have money. We have options. How many of these things they actually want to do? I don't know. But they may again, they may do more than this. So we'll, we'll see what they do. But I'm, I'm looking at um, some possibilities here. Now, do I think they're going to go get J.J. Watt? I still don't. I think if anything, they're going to use this money to be able to secure the guys they want to keep. If they want to keep King and, and Lindsley and Jones, they can do that. If they want to keep uh, Lindsley and maybe go out and get a, a, a free agent cornerback, um, cool. And then we'll focus on the draft or a tackle or whatever. But the, I think the, the real important thing here is to show that they have the flexibility, they have the ability to you know, not have to make horrible decisions because I think a lot of Packer fans see this as we're doomed. Right, we're gonna have to cut everybody. We can't sign any of our free agents, and we can't sign any other free agents. We barely are. I don't even know how we're gonna sign our draft class. It's not the case. They'll be all right. Um, it's uncharted territory. The Packers are not used to this, and this is what happens when you get aggressive. Packer fans have always wanted, hey, go all in, go all in, get everybody, do all the things. Well, we did. We got Zadarius and Amos and Turner and Preston and all these guys, and this is what happens. You know, you get into these little panicky territories. So um, they're gonna be fine, and it'll be interesting to see. Again, these are all speculative, what they do and how they do it. But um, this is just an example that, again, put us in a real good spot. So um, excited to see how they actually move forward. But uh, hopefully this was helpful. It was for me. Again, I did this basically live, and it, it really gave me a lot of comfort in, in, uh, in how things are going to go going forward. So anyways, thanks a lot, and uh, be sure to check out the Packernet Podcast. I'll catch you next time. Anita.